This is a Philips uh, 22HR541 motional feedback uh, active loudspeaker and uh, this is its power amplifier which has suffered a few electrolytic failures. This thing hasn't failed as of yet, it still works perfectly fine although it has a very slight 50Hz humming noise, no doubt due to that. But I'm going to restore this thing and uh, bring it back to its former glory. I'm suspecting there's going to be quite a lot of iffy looking solder joints on this thing. I mean, it is light speaking, you have these freestanding resistors all over and heavy components. I'm actually kind of surprised it hasn't failed in 40 years. But I suppose we'll find out. It has a lot of weird value caps, which I'm probably just going to replace with modern standard value equivalents because uh, what 150 microfarad 63 volt cap is not going to be used in any signal chain nor is a 330 microfarad 10 volt cap for that matter most of these measure bad and this one I can obviously measures bad so I think we're going to see some improvements now by remo just removing four screws around the back of this unit, you can get the power amplifier in an excellent service position. Really impressive design, I must say. But I've had a squeeze of all the solder joints, and I'm really impressed with the quality of them. This thing, I'm pretty certain, has never been worked on before. All the screws came out as if they'd never been removed, and the solder joints look very factory and almost none of them show any signs of wear whatsoever. I'm honestly astonished because those large power resistors should practically be falling off. I'll start removing caps and some of these are just impressively bad. This is a 4.7 microfarad 63 volt cap or something of the likes and it's at 100 ohms. It's not just a bad connection because if I put my fingers on it to heat it up, it drops dramatically. Wow. Really bad. These are <laughs> overdue for replacements. I'm quite impressed the speakers actually worked as well as they did. There we go. All the electrolytic caps have been replaced. I've dead bug soldered most of the replacements since I found that to be the most suitable way to put axial caps in place, uh, radial caps in place of axial ones and it does work out quite well as long as you gunk them down properly which I indeed have done I didn't have a suitable replacement for this so it had to be it turned into two I believe 470 mic caps in series and a couple of uh, rather thick copper standoffs to make the leads work and I think it turned out relatively tidy for what it is. It's, it's certainly going to be sturdier than the original one which was just a <laughs> that size cap flapping in the breeze with nothing to hold it down. Quite amazingly I haven't been able to find a single really bad solder joint on this thing. There are a couple of kind of borderline ones and I'm going to go through them all and repair when necessary but uh, to be honest this amplifier is in excellent condition so for the uh, explode mains cap we had going on now that is properly terrifying it must have leaked some of its contents out which is of course you know conductive electrolyte and it seems to have just been kind of conducting electricity for so long but everything's just kind of turned into a carbon mush on top I'm very surprised that it mushes as well as it does and it actually basically mushes within spec since it's a dual 1650 microfarad cap I was led astray by the other blue cap which is a dual 3400 microfarad, but yeah, <laughs> this one's obviously going to be lower capacitance. And if we hook it up to the meter, it measures just fine. I mean, it's supposed to be a 3300 microfarad cap, 
and at 20 milliohms you bloody well can't fault its uh, ESR so at least at very low voltages this cap works just fine but there's nothing to say how it acts when at its rated voltage when this stuff starts conducting anyway I've got to mount this back up and for reference uh, the cap I used uh, caps I used here I was very lucky in that I actually had suitable caps lying around. This is a 10 phase in microfarad a cap. It's not in Tallinn. You used it in my one of my Luxman amplifiers for about a year, but it was the wrong package, so I replaced it just to get the proper cap in there. So it's slightly used. And this is a, a ultra high reliability new old stock. Uh, a Japanese capacitor which was intended to go in an analog TV transmitter and this thing is probably about uh, well, almost as old as this entire speaker but it, it, it hasn't been used ever and it meshes perfectly and these caps are, I've seen them last through such horrible living circumstances that I think this is going to last for another 40 years so let's get this thing back together and see if it'll play Alright, first trial by fire with the actual speaker connected. Here we go. I do think that's audio. So with that out of the way, all that's left to do with this one is to just trim in the pot to get the proper DC bias and uh, acoustic feedback amount. And I haven't touched them yet, but I have hooked the meter up to the bias measurement point and we are looking for 13.2 millivolts. So let's see how close to the mark this strikes without being touched. 9.8, no that's not too bad I must say. I have allowed it to warm up. But I'm going to have to trim that I think. And when you're doing this you have to remember this is a 40 year old potentiometer which will most probably cause the amplifier to blow up if there's a bad connection there so you want to put some isopropyl alcohol on it and just give it a bit of a rub with the amplifier very much turned off. Okay, well, yeah, I think I'll be happy with that. You're not going to get something like this spot on, but uh, 0.2 millivolts, that's pretty much spot on. The procedure for adjusting the amount of uh, acoustic feedback is a bit more interesting though. The manual tells you to measure across a couple of connectors up there in the plug that goes to the actual enclosure. And those connectors are the woofer driver. And you're supposed to use... Uh, this potentiometer there to adjust the uh, amount of voltage you get into it. Now that's a bit weird because y since you're measuring the voltage across the woofer this potentiometer is uh, going to adjust the gain of the amplifier, it isn't going to adjust the amount of uh, actual feedback being fed back into, into it from the piezoelectric transducer. So, I mean, the end results are the same since uh, they're probably just having the amount of feedback be entirely constant. But I just found that to be a bit curious. And anyway, I think we're hooked up now. Uh, no, bloody probe's not working properly. There we go. And we should be able to get a signal. I've got a as specified a low ohmic signal generator which is being substituted by my test stereo uh, power amplifier being fed by the distortion analyzer signal generator and we're supposed to use 125 hertz and we're aiming for 110 to 120 millivolts so we'll see what happens this might get a tad loud That's about as spot on as you can get it. 
did you... What a curious effect when you turn it on. <laughs> you can hear the lag prior to the feedback circuit actually engaging properly. So it's actually pulling down. If we, I, I would be quite certain of that. The uh, woofer by nature would be resonating at about 125 hertz. And the circuit at this particular frequency is just attenuating that frequency quite a lot. Because let's just turn it on again. You can hear it spiking quite significantly at turn on. But yeah, I'm not going to try even try and adjust that. That's a spot enough we're going to get it. Beautiful. 40 year old adjustment still working up to spec. And here's number two. These screws don't have the same click to them as the other ones did, so this one might have been messed with before. Socket at first glance. So, just throw some new caps in this too, and we'll be all done. And here's how I apply the debug caps. As you can see, I've folded the lead saver, making very sure that neither of them are anywhere near touching the aluminium uh, cap of the, the cap. <laughs> and uh, then I just uh, push them into the hole with the uh, short lead. I usually use the negative lead for the short lead, or the straight down lead, and I just poke it in, like so, and also get the long lead into the hole, but then I tilt it just slightly toward the short lead, because that's usually just about long enough to go through the hole properly, bend the lead on the other side just slightly so that it grips on, as you can see this cap's not going anywhere now. And then just push it down to create a bit of tension on the leads and bend the long lead. Because now, as you can see, the cap is quite solidly in there. And I mean, I haven't even soldered it yet. You can see, if, if you're watching HD probably, the, me moving my hand through the holes there. So that's why I prefer to use the dead bug style on replacing actual caps with radial ones. Ideally you should of course use uh, radial caps, but uh, this is a lot sturdier than doing it the traditional way, which is to just bend the leads over like that, because these caps really, I mean these are soldered, and they're nowhere near a stable. And there we go. Two recapped amplifier modules, and aren't they lovely pieces indeed? All oh, these are uh, Blue Phillips <laughs> Horus Dorsa 8. Uh, these guys should be right back up to their former glory, and with the addition of properly tech down capacitors at least. I haven't bothered taking down all the other Phillips mounted stuff since that would basically mean covering the entire board and gunk and I don't really feel like doing that it would kind of ruin it I just love the modularity of this if they just pop off with six screws in the plug then you have everything four more and you get the board out and four more upon that and a couple of solder joints and you have the power transistors out. They're just beautifully designed to, to be frank. Hmm. So now to get this one properly tested and calibrated and then these two guys are going to be all done. And there we go, it all cleans up and made it back together and I must say these turned out really, really nice. 
Well, there you can see someone's pole wheel switchering on the tweeter on the right one. But thankfully, these are extremely common Philips tweeters, as far as I'm aware. And I think I know just where I can source one, so fingers crossed that problem should be solved quite readily. And beyond that, I'm probably going to make yet another video doing some measurements on these, if I can make anything interesting out of it, because the performance on these should be quite impressive, especially in the low range. But uh, I need to wait for some less rainy weather in order to manage to do that, so in the meantime, cheerio, thank you for watching. Slight bit of a rat on this uh, seemingly incorrect tweeter. Oh, it's been a few days since I shot the last, uh, the last part of that video. I just actually had this thing out, and it turns out, uh, much to my surprise, that uh, this seems to be the original tweeter. And what made me suspect this was the wrong one, aside from the different construction around there, it was the fact that it used three screws, whereas the other one has four. So of course I suspected that some tech had just gotten these in for service and you know, we've got this old Philips whatever tweet lying around, it looks suitable enough, let's drill some new holes in there and get this customer out the door as fast as possible. But uh, no, it's uh, supposed to be this tweeter because it, these three holes are factory and there are no four hole mounting. And this tweet is in Philips AD0162, uh, which, for all I can gather, is a proper replacement for the 01, uh, 0161. So, I don't think I'm going to replace this, to be frank. I'm, of course, still going to have to measure the speakers and find out if they sound the same. If they sound very different, then that's going to be an issue, but right now I'm suspecting that these two are going to perform just fine. Really weird, really, really weird, because these are not many serial numbers apart, they're just a couple of hundred. So these two must be just, I don't know, from the time where they uh, switched over to the new style tweeter, or manufacture different uh, assembly lines or something like that.